Oh, perfect. Students will just be able to join in. Beautiful. Here they come. I completely appreciate the students who have their cameras on. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We will get started. We have exceeded 100. So welcome. Good morning. I'm Dr. Michelle Shostak, Assistant Dean and Director of the School of Arts and Sciences EOF program, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to our information session this morning. The goal of this session is to let you know about our program and to answer any questions that you have about being an EOF scholar within the School of Arts and Sciences and the schools we serve, and to tell you about our Summer Institute. We will be using the chat, which is enabled for everyone. If you have any questions, you are welcome to post them in the chat and a member of our team will either address them throughout the presentation or within the chat to respond. But we plan to get to all of the questions. Attendance will be taken at the end of the presentation. So please stick around through the end so you can get credit for being here today. So we will get started. The EOF program at the School of Arts and Sciences is the largest in the state of New Jersey. Over the course of the year, we serve over 1,200 EOF scholars from not only the School of Arts and Sciences, but the Rutgers Business School, Mason Gross School of the Arts, the School of Management and Labor Relations, and the Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy. At this time, I would like to introduce you to our team. So if the members of the SAS EOF team could please raise their hands and introduce yourselves in order of how we see hands raised. And then once you've introduced yourself, we'll go to the next person. So Mrs. Berkeley, start us off. Hi. Good morning, Shauna Berkeley, and I am the um, EOF manager for the Livingston Campus Site SAS EOF office. Welcome. Good morning, I'm Sherelle Smith, an SAS EOF counselor for the College Avenue campus. Welcome. Good morning, my name is Mr. King, SAS EOF uh, senior counselor on College Avenue. Uh, I look forward to meeting you all during the summer. Good morning, everyone. My name is Diane Marte, Administrative Assistant on College Avenue. Welcome. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Hamza Ghani. I'm an EOF counselor in the College Avenue office. Excited to meet you all and welcome. Hi, good morning. I'm Miss Alicia Torres. I am a senior counselor over at the Livingston campus. I'm excited for you guys this summer. Matt, you're muted. You're muted. See? <laughs> this is a live broadcast. This is what we have to deal with here. Hi, my name is Matthew Green. I'm a senior EOF counselor uh, on the Livingston campus. Looking forward to seeing you all and uh, answering your questions. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Alexandra Vinicu, senior EOF counselor at the Livingston campus. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Capasso Lee. I'm our senior program manager. I'm over at the Livingston campus. Welcome. And I hope you are ready to take some notes. Okay, get your pen and papers out. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Ms. Portia Mielbauer. I am the program coordinator over at the Livingston site, as well as the assistant hall director over the summer. Good morning, everyone. My name is Zena Jubilee. I am the EOF manager on College Avenue, and I'll look forward to working with you all this summer, and I'll be working specifically with our Mason Grove students who are on today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So this is our team, and you will get an opportunity to see them throughout 
your time at Rutgers University. Julice, I saw your message in the chat. There might be some phone numbers that are associated with this Zoom call. So you could certainly forward them to your dad and maybe he could access one of those from, from his location. We are also recording this session. So for any parents or guardians who are not able to be here today, we'll have this posted on our website as soon as it becomes available for viewing that way. Dr. Shostak, Ms. Diamond Rodriguez has to introduce herself as well. I know she was trying to. Oh, great. Yes, absolutely. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Diamond Rodriguez, and I'm a senior EOF counselor on the Livingston campus. Welcome. Great. Next slide, please. So as I had mentioned, every EOF scholar is assigned to a counselor who becomes your first point of contact with assistance with navigating all aspects of Rutgers University. As an EOF scholar at Rutgers University, you have the opportunity to select from a large array of majors, minors in all fields from the humanities, social sciences, and STEM fields. As a condition of your admission to Rutgers University, you must successfully complete the Summer Institute. When Mrs. Lee speaks shortly, she'll share much more with you about the Summer Institute, but important to note that the Summer Institute begins on Monday, July 3rd. Yes, we will close for the 4th of July, but then we will continue through Friday, July 28th. During the Summer Institute, you will have an opportunity to earn three degree credits. So it is important in order to place you in your Summer Institute courses that if you have accepted your offer of admission, that you take your Rutgers placement test right away because we will be using those results again to place you in summer courses. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Senior Program Manager, Mrs. Lee. Thank you so much, Dr. Shostak. And good morning, everyone. Uh, again, welcome. Again, like I said, I, I hope you're taking notes because it is important information we're giving you. Um, but the most important thing is that this information is all on our website as well. So if you haven't had a chance later on today, please go check out our website. Everything that I'm going to be talking about is there as well. So our Summer Institute, it is an intensive academic four-week program. And the most important thing is that it does help you transition from high school to college. Many of us have experienced the nerves, the understanding of what a campus would be like their first day in September, right? You have the opportunity to do so right during the summer months. You'll get acclimated to the campus environment and you'll be taking courses. Math, English, and a first year course is what we offer in our summer institute. And it is block scheduling. So if you're not familiar, you're going to be taking classes, right? Starting from eight o'clock in the morning all the way to mid-afternoon, every day, Monday through Friday. So it is a pretty rigorous program. That is why we call you scholars. We really believe that when you come into our program, you become scholars. You get this opportunity to take these courses, but in addition, you are one of the very few groups on campus to have a counselor. A one specific assigned counselor to you, and you get to meet with them throughout the summer experience as well. In addition to that, there is a housing component. So you're going to be assigned a resident mentor. That is someone who's a student like you, who's an upperclassman, who's worked really hard to apply for this position and is ready to meet with you and help you through this transition as well. They're going to be doing activities and workshops. We have alumni returning for career conference. There are so many things about the summer that is not just academics. It's an overhaul experience that's going to help you through everything. And I keep using the word transition because that's exactly what is going to happen to you. You are going to transition. You're going to be the experts come the fall. So who has to attend our Summer Institute? Well, if you become an SAS student, scholar, right, and you're a first-year scholar, you must attend in person. Now, I wrote there, no vacations or missed days. Missing one day of class is like missing a whole week. It is an intensified course load that is in just four weeks, and one of them being virtual. So you can imagine how much information your professors are going to be giving to you. I know you've been reaching out to your counselors. I know you've been reaching out to me. I've been getting those emails. A lot of you are asking questions like, I have a vacation planned. You have to have a conversation with your parents and you have to make that decision. 
Do you want to be an SAS EOF scholar and participate in the Summer Institute? Because it's going to be very challenging and very difficult, and we're not going to be able to approve a week-long vacation, to be completely honest with you, and miss a week of our academic program. So I need you to really hear that. If you have a driver's license test planned, reschedule it. It's a very important that you understand that unless there's a, a specific medical situation or something that is a case by case that you have to talk to your counselor about, it's very difficult to say, hey, we will excuse you from something. Now, July 9th, which is a Sunday, is in-person move-in. I'm telling you from now so that you can already plan ahead and start thinking about who's going to be able to come with you and drop you off, who's going to bring those essential items with you which by the way, all of that is on our website. If you go to our Summer Institute packet on our website, you're going to see information like what to bring, what you need, what residence hall we're gonna be in. And then in the course of the month of June, I'm gonna be sending you all emails with a plethora of information letting you know who your resident mentor is, what floor you're gonna be living on, who your assigned roommate is. I've had many people already send me an email asking, if their friend could be their roommate, that's not an option for you. But thank you so much for asking. I appreciate the effort, okay? Now, what's the cost? It's free. And I'm gonna say it again, it's free, okay? Not many things in life are free anymore. It is free. We will cover your textbooks, your housing. We're covering dining. You're gonna be doing lunch and dinners together for the entire experience. There's a lot of bonding that happens and a lot of community building that happens here. And of course, we're gonna cover your summer tuition. So what is required? I really need you to have a laptop. And I understand many people buy Chromebooks, but I promise you the cost today for a laptop is quite comparable. And, and if you're already thinking about graduation gifts, this is a great thing to ask from people, okay? So I really do need you to have a laptop and I need you to have internet access because you know you just never know. I need you to take your placement test ASAP. I know the people are answering in the chat for you. When can you take your placement test by and all that stuff? As soon as possible. Why? Because if I'm offering you a math and an English course in the summer, I need to know what to place you in. And I can't place you unless I know. And I need to know because I need to know how many students are going to be in each space for the summer. So everything has a cause and effect. And that is why we do things very early in our program. That's why we ask for a lot of information ahead of time. Now, COVID and immunization records, they're through the portal, the pathway that is very important for you to submit. That is a universal requirement. So please read that carefully and submit whatever necessary documents, medical documents you need to do so. Now, your counselor, we're going to keep saying it for the rest of our lives with you. They're your first point of contact. Make sure you're contacting them about all the forms that you're filling out. If you have a question about the form, if a form doesn't open, if you're unclear about what we're asking, ask us. Don't just assume. Don't Google forms because sometimes in the World Wide Web, an old form is going to pop up. And you're going to say, hey, I filled out a form and it doesn't say what you're asking me to. Are you saying that I didn't complete a form because we get them on the back end because you completed something different? I really need you to get those forms from our website directly. It's very important you do so. And most important, some of you will be considered minors for our program. So it is important for you to know that if you're considered under the age of 18 on July 9th, you are considered a minor for us. And so you will be housed accordingly in that same residence hall with other minors. So this is our Summer Institute general information. Again, I have so much more on our website. Ms. Muehlbauer is actually going to be our hall director. We will have two assistant hall directors, and we will have over 10 resident mentors who will be welcoming you into the building this summer. It will be Hardenberg Hall, but again, I'm going to leave it for you to go to the, our website and check out all that information. Happy to answer questions in the chat, as my colleagues will be doing as well. But I am so excited to meet all of you. I am so excited for this experience for you. I promise it will be life-changing. Of course, with that also comes financial aid information. So I'm going to pass it on to Ms. Linnell James, who is our program coordinator for financial aid, outreach, and recruitment. So Ms. James, go for it. 
I'm very excited to meet you all uh, to join us for this information session. Uh, many of you I may have met on the road or you've met many of our team members at your high schools or information sessions or college fairs. So it's really nice to see it come full circle and that you've been here and you're admitted. Now, as part of the process for EOF review, um, you must complete an EOF verification process. Now, all of you were uh, have committed, have admitted, who well, have been admitted, excuse me, have completed the first portion of this process with the Rutgers Admissions Office. They reviewed your 2020 income. It's documented that you meet the eligibility criteria for the EOF program. Now we're going to complete the second portion of this review to confirm your eligibility. Now, this process requires, of course, first that you complete the financial aid application. And if you hadn't, you probably received an email, very nice email from uh, Ms. Uh, Diani Marte um, to let you know that we need that information completed. Hopefully you've done that and processed that as quickly as possible so we can then request the documents needed. So now what is this process, right? The EOF confirmation process is a state required uh, step in order to confirm your eligibility to receive the EOF grant and academic services. So it confirms your eligibility, number one, for the grant. Number two, it actually helps you because if you, there was a mistake possibly made on your financial aid application, maybe your FAFSA or your New Jersey alternative application, Rutgers Financial Aid will work together with you to, um, to collect the correct information and update it on your behalf. It'll also finalize your EOF admissions to Rutgers University, right? So I just wanna to emphasize to everyone that right now you are conditionally admitted and to verify and to complete the process in your admissions for EOF review, you must complete this step. It also verifies the information again, that's on your FAFSA and your New Jersey alternative application. So many students might wonder, well, what, are, what is Rutgers gonna ask me, right? If you take a look at the chart, this is the state mandated chart. It uh, reviews you based on your household size, all sources of income, and then as well as your assets. And assets includes um, business owned, um, properties owned, as well as um, cash and savings. So if you review your FAFSA and you've seen the information that you've put into your documentation where you said maybe your parents earned $50,000, we're going to ask you to show us proof. And what that looks like, we'll go through that step. Um, we're going to document the year for 2021, and we will show you how you're going to access your financial aid portal in your My Rutgers account. We'll take it step by step. Financial aid has also created a student uh, library. We'll have access for multiple videos, step-by-step -step guides to help walk you through the process because it can be very confusing. Once you've accepted your admissions to Rutgers University through the EOF program, you'll be assigned to your EOF counselor. One of your counselors will help you uh, with this process, but it only works if you're responsive. So it's very important that you check your email and you complete the process as early as possible. The faster you complete it, the quicker financial aid will be able to review you. They review the students in the order that they receive the documentation. Now, as Dr. Shostak said, we are the largest program in the state of New Jersey, but we are one of seven programs at Rutgers University uh, alone. So there will be multiple students that will be submitting their files. And if you want your decision made as quickly as possible, it's very important that you submit the requested items. Check your email every day. Check your spam. It's very possible that some of the, doc the document requests may be going to your spam, especially if you had registered um, through Rutgers using your school ID. Make sure you check those permissions. Update it to a personal email. And then um, it's very important that you know that it is possible that you may be determined ineligible for the EOF program based on your 2021. Uh, in order for you to get an answer as quickly as possible, we, like I said, it's very important that you submit your information. If you think you may not be eligible for your program, it's important that you say something to us early enough that we may be able to fast track your application to get you reviewed without EOF uh, for Rutgers admissions. Now, what documentation are we requesting? Like I said, it's the 2021 income year, so that's two years ago. We're gonna ask you for your tax return transcripts. I'm gonna explain what that is a little bit later. We're going to ask you for your W-2 forms. If you did not file taxes, we may ask you for a verification of non-filing letter. 
There is a verification worksheet um, to confirm who is in your household. That is the Rutgers online form. We may ask you to complete a monthly expenses and resource statement if you listed little to no assets or income on your application. If your family received child support or paid child support payments, we may re uh, request a documentation to, uh, to show the total. If your family received SNAP benefits, there is a Rutgers documentation that may be required. All students are going to be asked to complete an asset verification worksheet where we'll ask you know, about the business's own, how much is in the bank to confirm that information. We will also ask for um, if anyone's received social security benefits, welfare, food stamps, Medicaid, any taxed and untaxed income will be um, asked to be documented. We have prepared our website for the SAS EOF confirmation page as samples of all of these documents. Now, you know, you can always Google a document to try to figure out what it is. Um, you have your resource of your EOF counselor once you've accepted your offer of admissions. You will have my direct contact information at the end of this presentation to help you through this process. But it's very important that you review our EOF webpage because a lot of the questions that you're going to have are actually highlighted or maybe documented there for you. Now, what is the IRS tax return transcript? This is a documentation, an IRS record to prove that you have um, filed your taxes. Now, typically this is requested of all tax filers. So whether you or your parents have filed taxes and you've indicated this on your tax, your financial aid application, we will ask for this documentation. I'm not sure if somebody is unmuted. There we go. Um, it is important that you get this, the document that is shown in the image. Now, many of you may have your parents' 1040s at home. Unfortunately, we will not be able to accept the documentation as proof. You will need to go to the irs.gov website and either request it by fax, uh, or you can request it online, or the quickest way is to download it off of their website. That requires that you create an online account. An account may need to be created for your parent or the student. So if you file taxes, this is the document um, the labeled IRS tax return transcript. You may be asked to submit a verification of non-filing letter. That is proof that you did not file taxes in 2021. It is the same process. You're going to try to either download it from the IRS's website. You may be able to request a document by fax or um, complete um, a request to get an in-person appointment. At this point in time, the quickest way to get it is definitely the download. Students may have uh, repeated attempts to get the form in the past years. We've always had students that tell us they can't get the form. Our answer is always going to be that you should probably make an in-person appointment to get the documentation. Um, these are, there are no alternatives to these forms. So you have to find a way to get them. And students, the IRS will work with you to get the form. It's just that you have to act quickly as possible. Now, to access your financial aid portal, this is where you're going to log in to view the documents that are required and actually upload the forms to Rutgers University. They do not accept any documents in person, by paper, by fax. You will need to upload them directly into your online account. To access your online account, you will go to my.ruckers.edu. You will log in to your My Dashboard. It's very important that you've already activated your Net ID in order to access your My Rutgers account. Um, each account is um, student specific. So all of the links that you will see, there is no third party website. You will need to go into your student portal to access your information. Up at the top, you may see a financial aid tab. Do not use this tab. This tab is out of date. This is based on our old system. We've just updated a system um, this, um, this year. So it's important that you're accessing any financial information from your My Dashboard portal and using the My Financial Aid widget. When you click on the My Financial Aid widget, it will take you to the actual web page of your My Financial Aid student portal. This is where you'll see everything related to your financial aid. 
regarding what documents you need to submit, if there are any notifications from the Office of Financial Aid, as well as your financial aid award letter. When you log in, you'll be taken to the home page, and it will tell you the status of all of your documentation, whether it's pending, whether you need to accept certain awards, or whether you still need to submit um, any of the documentation to accept or decline your federal loans, okay? When you click on the financial aid tab, it will take you to your award letter. It's very important that you're taking a look at the tuition and fees and estimated costs and expenses. Just review those. Like I said, these are all estimated. By the end of July, by the time you're done with the Summer Institute, um, the Board of Governors and the university would have determined what are the true tuition costs for the next academic year. So everything is still going to be estimated as far as the costs. In number two, you'll see how much financial aid you will receive, okay? Um, it's very important that you review it carefully, and if you have questions, you can reach out to our program or to the One Stop about your financial aid um, awards. Now, what if you do not receive your offer letter? You do not have an award letter when you log in to view your account. The first step is to make sure that you've, correct, you've correctly completed a financial aid application. So typically our students are completing the FAFSA, make sure you log in and make sure you've completed the one for the 23-24 academic year. Make sure it's submitted. And if your parents needed to sign it, there are signatures and it is com completed. If you're a New Jersey um, dreamer and you completed the alternative application, you need to make sure that you've completed the process and you contact the state directly if there's any questions. Um, once you've done that step, you need to make sure you log into your student portal because sometimes you may be selected for a verification process outside of the EOF review. So sometimes the federal government may need additional documents and that's why your award is on hold. It may take up to 10 business days for the Office of Financial Aid to process your award letter after your financial aid application is completed. And if you still have not received an, a, an award, you want to contact the One Stop directly. The One Stop is a culmination of the financial aid office, the student accounting office, as well as the registrar's office. So they will be able to help you troubleshoot um, getting your award letter. Now, all your documents will be viewed in uh, the documentation tab. Once you click on the tab at the top, it will list all of the forms that you need to submit in white. It will list a verification worksheet, <clears throat> excuse me, an asset verification worksheet. They may ask you for the tax return transcripts or the non-filing statements. Whatever income that you have entered in your FAFSA that your family received, they're going to ask you to provide additional proof to submit for the EOF confirmation process. An important step to remember is um, all parents, if you're a dependent student, parent signatures will be required for this process. Now, as I mentioned, financial aid does not accept any documentation via paper. So in order to sign the documentation, you will need to make sure that all your parents have a, an account, oops, an account uh, of their own related to their My Ruckers. So you're going to create a community ID um, for your parents. Then you're going to need to create, um, give them access to your account in your My Rutgers portal. Now, there are videos and steps in the financial aid student library that will take you step by step in order to complete the process. But again, you must first give them permission in your My Rutgers portal. You're going to give them authorized access. And then you will need to make sure that you've given them access as an authorized user to have custodial, not just read only, but custodial access. That will then allow your parents to sign any of your documentation that requires a parent's signature virtually. Now, last year we did have some issues with that process. So if that is the case and your experiences experiencing difficulty signing documents, make sure you tell your EOF counselor directly as soon as possible so we can troubleshoot it with the financial aid office. And finally, um, the EOF program is a state program that is in connection with the New Jersey Higher Education Student Assistance Authority. 
in order to make sure that you can receive your EOF state funds once you've been confirmed EOF eligible, you need to make sure that you've completed your HESA account. Now, what that requires is going to the HESA website, njfams.hesa.org, and you may need to actually create an account as a first year student. You're gonna log in and view your to-do list. Now, a lot of the documentation that is requested from HESA will be very similar to what is requested for the EOF verification process. So you may feel like you're submitting the documents multiple times, but it's important that you read the instructions very clearly and submit it to them. The reason why he says very important is actually because their decision is final over any decision that Rutgers makes. So if they may determine that you have certain assets or income that make you ineligible for the program, unfortunately, we may not be able to override it unless you provide further documentation, okay? So it's important that you're completing both processes as quickly as possible. The HESA, um, HESA has offered to provide us workshops this summer and spring for our incoming students. So stay tuned. I will be um, putting uh, information how you can register for a Zoom workshop with the state, and they will help you with your account one-on-one. -on -one. If you have immediate questions, you can definitely reach out to them um, with their numbers here. Now, this was a lot of information, and we know that it's a lot to process, but to, we're giving you today to make sure that you can start the process of gathering your documentation. Now, as um, you go about your day later on today, um, you're going to speak to your parents, if your parents are not on this call, and you're going to show them the SAS EOF website. You're going to go to Summer Institute and then the EOF confirmation page. Review the documentation, review the steps, review the information video. This presentation will all also be added to the website for your information. You can view some of the documents that will be requested. You could take a look and click on some of the images of what some of the documents look like, right? Look at your FAFSA and take a look at what you've entered as far as your income and resources for 2021. Start gathering those documentation. I would encourage you to start, start scanning them and saving them on your computer. That way they're ready to upload once financial aid emails the alerts that the process has begun. Order the IRS forms. Go to the IRS website. You're going to try to download. If not, you're going to order it by mail. Make sure it comes to you within 10 business days. If not, make sure you get an appointment in person to get the documentation. Make sure you register for a verification session. Those are going to be mandatory. We are still waiting to release the official dates as to when financial aid will actually begin the process. Then you will receive emails and reminders as to when to register for a session. It's very important that you're responsive for this process. Again, it means your Rutgers admissions through the EUF program. So uh, the biggest indicator for us as a student is your responsiveness to the process. And we can only help you if you let us know if you meet any difficulties. We're here to support you through the process because we know it can be very confusing. Sometimes it's confusing for us, right? In all honesty, but we wanna make sure that every student that's admitted through our program successfully starts and is confirmed EOF eligible. All right. Now, I know that was a lot of information and you have a lot of questions and there's lots of questions that are coming up in the chat. Um, the first thing I wanna address is for attendance. So you need to make sure that you've scanned the QR code or Ms. Berkeley is going to drop the link in the chat for you if you're unable to scan the code. It's important that you complete the attendance because this is how you're going to get your absence, excused absence letter um, within the next hour or so about the process. Okay. And if you need to reach us with any questions, you can contact us directly through our, our email, or you can reach out to your assigned EOF counselor. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to stop. Oh, no. I'm going to keep it up to make sure everybody is scared.